How did the months of the year get their names? Find out the answer during the course of this video. What happens if you put a fresh egg and a rotten egg in water? Answer while the fresh egg will sink in water, the rotten egg will float. Fresh egg sinks because, the egg yolk, egg white, and gases have enough mass, so that the density of the egg is greater than the density of water. However, when the egg is rotten, the process of decomposition occurs. As more of the egg decomposes, more of its mass is converted to gases, and a gas bubble forms inside the egg. Eggs are porous, so some of the gas escapes through the eggshell and is lost to the atmosphere. Although gases are light, they do have mass, and affect the density of the egg. When enough gas is lost, the density of the egg is less than that of water, and the egg floats. Which is the river that is not crossed by any bridges? Answer, the Amazon River. There are no bridges anywhere across the entire 4,000 mile plus length of the river Amazon, which flows across the countries Peru, Colombia, and Brazil, and the crossing of the river is done by ferries. This is not because the river is too wide to bridge, but that for most of its course, the river flows through the Amazon rainforest, where there are very few roads and cities. The dense rainforest is sparsely populated outside of a few large cities, and the river itself is the main highway for those traveling through the region. Which country has the longest coastline in the world? Answer, Canada. Canada has the longest coastline in the world, measuring at 202,080 kilometers, which includes the mainland coast, and the coasts of offshore islands. It is followed in the second position by Indonesia, having coastline of 99,083 km, and Norway in the third position with 58,133 km. In the game of cricket, which bird's name means, scoring no runs? Answer, duck. The term is a short form of the term, duck's egg, believed to come from the shape of the number zero, being similar to that of a duck's egg. It has its origin in the year 1866, long before the international test cricket began, when referring to the Prince of Wales's, that is the future Edward VII's, score of zero on 17 July 1866, a contemporary newspaper wrote that, the prince retired to the royal pavilion on a duck's egg. The first duck was scored by Ned Gregory, when Australia took on England at Melbourne in 1877. Courtney Walsh holds the record for getting the most number of ducks in test cricket, 43 times. 
Interestingly, the great Sir Don Bradman was dismissed for a duck in his last test innings, and he ended up with a test average of 99.94. If he had scored at least four runs, his average would have touched 100. Now back to the question number one. How did the months of the year, get their names? Answer, the months get their names from the ancient Roman calendar. The ancient Roman calendar began in March, and ended in February, and initially only had 10 months. Later on, the Romans added in two more months. However, in 1582, Pope Gregory readjusted the calendar, and since then most Western nations began celebrating the start of the year on 1st January. This new calendar came to be known as, the Gregorian calendar. However, even in the modern Gregorian calendar, we continue to use the same month names, as used by the ancient Romans. January is named after the Roman god Janus, the god of beginnings and endings, and the protector of gates and doorways. Janus is depicted with two faces, one looking into the past, and the other into the future. In ancient Roman times, the gates of the temple of Janus were open in times of war, and closed in times of peace. February is derived from the Latin word, februa, which means, to cleanse, and is named after an ancient Roman festival of purification, an atonement called, februa, held on the 15th of this month. The festival aimed to cleanse the city of evil spirits, and welcome health and fertility. March is named after Mars, the Roman god of war because this was the month when active military campaigns, that had been interrupted by the winter, resumed. April is derived from the Latin word, aperire, which means to open, as this period represents the opening of buds, and flowers in spring. May is named after the Greek goddess Maya, the earth goddess of growing plants, who oversaw the growth of plants. Maya was considered a nurturer, and an earth goddess, which explains the connection of her name with this springtime month, when flowers and crops burst forth. June is named after the Roman goddess Juno, queen of gods, and the patroness of marriage and the well-being of women and childbirth. July initially used to be called, Quintilus, the Roman word for fifth, as it was the fifth month of the early Roman calendar. However, it was later changed to July, to honor Julius Caesar, right after his assassination in 44 BC, July being the month of his birth. July is the first month in the calendar, that bears the name of a real person, rather than a deity. August initially used to be called, Sextilia, the Roman word for sixth, as it was the sixth month of the early Roman calendar. However, it was later changed to August, to honor the first Roman emperor, and grandnephew of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar in 8 BC. The emperor's name came from the Latin word, Augustus, which gave rise to the adjective, August, meaning respected and impressive. September, comes from the Latin word, septum, meaning seven, because it was the seventh month of the early Roman calendar. October, comes from the Latin word, octo, meaning eight, because it was the eighth month of the early Roman calendar. November, comes from the Latin word, novem, meaning nine because this had been the ninth month of the early Roman calendar. December, comes from the Latin word, decem, meaning 10, because this had been the 10th month of the early Roman calendar.